So fermentation is an anaerobic process that organisms can perform when uh, there is a lack of oxygen uh, in the environment. So human beings perform what's known as lactic acid fermentation. And in this particular lab, we studied an organism that is known as yeast, which is a fungi, a uh, eukaryotic organism. And yeast perform alcohol fermentation. So this fungus performs alcohol fermentation. What's required for alcohol fermentation to occur is first, you're going to need a sugar source. This process is going to look very similar to glycolysis. So you're going to use a sugar source of some sort plus water. And at the end of this process, what you're going to actually wind up getting is carbon dioxide as a byproduct, ethanol. and of course, adenosine triphosphate. Okay, so, what we're actually going to use to measure how quickly this process is occurring in this experiment is the amount of carbon dioxide produced. So we're going to look at how quickly yeast produce carbon dioxide in a variety of different types of environmental conditions. So, what we did in this experiment, in this exercise, we took yeast and we added one of three solutions, water, glucose, or sucrose. Okay, and then after adding these three to yeast, we allow them to incubate at room temperature, and then we place them in a specific apparatus that would make the process occurring the anaerobic. In other words, we want to deprive them of oxygen so they're forced into the anaerobic process of fermentation. And that particular apparatus looks something like this. Okay. And this particular item is called a fermentation tube. So what happens is we mix the solution, whatever it is, with the yeast, we pour it in here, and we allow it to incubate for a variety of different time points, 0, 10, 20, 30, and 40 minute time points. At each time point, we pull this out and we look. And the area that we're going to look at in this tube is up here. And here's what happens over time. If fermentation is occurring, as time goes on, what we'll start to see is at the very beginning, we'll just see an accumulation of tiny bubbles. Okay, but as time goes on and time progresses, what we'll start to see is large empty space in the end of this tube. Both those bubbles and that space represent carbon dioxide, which is being produced as a byproduct of the process of fermentation. So, when thinking about this, we need to first ask ourselves, okay, which of these solutions do we know for a fact is not going to result in the production of ethanol? And remember, I told you, just like in glycolysis, you're going to need to start with some form of potential energy or chemical en energy stored in a macromolecule. And the only one of these three solutions that does not have that is water. Okay? So you do not see any carbon dioxide produced in the water tube because it is lacking that source of initial energy. All right, now we need to discuss what could potentially happen with glucose or sucrose. Okay, so 
And thinking about this, we, we know that because they're both sugars and sucrose can be metabolized into fructose and glucose, that we're actually going to wind up making carbon dioxide in both of these. So both of these make CO2. But the big question is going to be which of these two would make more CO2. Okay, so there are several different things that should go into you formulating your hypothesis about this. First and foremost, if you think about sucrose, it is a disaccharide, which means that before it actually can enter glycolysis, it has to undergo hydrolysis and be converted into its two monosaccharides, glucose and fructose. Okay, this is done by an enzyme called sucrase. While glucose does not. Okay, but after it has been converted, there's an enzyme called hexokinase, or hexokinase that converts glucose here into glucose 6 phosphate. Okay, and then that glucose 6 phosphate is converted into fructose 6 phosphate. This is all seen in your lab manual. And that same enzyme, hexokinase, actually does the same thing to fructose. So, when you're formulating your hypothesis, you need to look at, first off, the fact that sucrose undergoes hydrolysis, and the actual act of metabolizing sucrose is going to mean that it's going to take a little longer to get a hold of the glucose or the fructose that you need to make all of your products and eventually make the byproduct of carbon dioxide. But at the same time, after sucrose has been metabolized, you're going to form both glucose and fructose. All the fructose that has been produced is going to technically enter this process at a later step than the glucose here will. So, using all of that information that I gave you, interpret the results that you obtained in your lab and see if you can come to a conclusion as to why whichever one of these you observed was higher, why you would hypothesize that that one may have been higher in carbon dioxide. So that's it for fermentation. The next unit I'm going to cover is going to be photosynthesis.